Today's interview is with John Neese. So John is a former NFL player. And in this episode, he is sharing basically his dark night of the soul, like the lonely, vain, <laughs> selfish, unfulfilling life that many people, many people have walked that road. And he, I love that he is so vulnerable about it. He's just being real. He's like, this is where I was at. This was what my intentions were. And this is what it led to a lot of sadness, like a very, very dark time in his life. And he is sharing his turnaround, which is super cool. I, I joked about it in the episode, but I was kind of like calling him karate kid for a minute because he meets this spiritual teacher, his grandmaster. This guy is like 20, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know the terminology is like 21 levels of black belt or something like that. Like so incredible. The stuff that he's telling the beauty of what um, this man helped him with in walking a more spiritual road, a more fulfilled life. And, you know, he's been married for over 20 years now, has four kids, completely turned his life life around, um, opened a, a fitness studio that he ran for over 20 years. Um, and he's got two books. One is the seven disciplines of strength, which he's going to talk about those in this episode. And he also has a book called punt this true story of John Neese. And he was a punter in the NFL and he shares all about that. He, um, man, he gets open about some shady business that he got into for a little while and trying to get out of all that. He has such an incredible story. And now he is walking in, Oh, the path of spirituality, thriving, fulfilled, healthy, you know, and he's teaching other people how to do the same now, like that man was able to teach him. And so I know you guys are going to enjoy this episode. He's really keeping it real, super enjoyable to listen to, and just an amazing story. Um, he's going to share with you guys. He has a discount on his awesome. I love, I was like getting all excited. You'll hear at the end, I was getting all excited about his program because it's, it's sophisticated and simple and, and effective. I know because the things that he's teaching are things that I have learned in my life that have completely changed the game. And so, um, anyway, the website for that is new strength unleashed.com forward slash coach Tara. He's giving you 20% off of that program that he'll talk about. That's 49 days. It's kind of like a challenge and it's super, super cool. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Here is John Neese. All right, guys, I'm so happy to have John here with me. And John, we talked a little bit before getting started. And I'm so excited because from what I've heard from you, and I feel like I'm the I'm the same way in, in, in a lot of ways, is we are grateful for our lows. We are grateful for the hard times and getting our ass handed to us and eating humble pie because it woke <laughs> us up into this path of limitlessness and beauty and goodness and being able to help and serve. And so I was wondering if you could start by sharing your path, your story with being in the NFL. Um, you say there was some, some, uh, self-sabotage possibly or something along those lines going on right. there. So I was wondering if you, before we get into the awesomeness that you're bringing to the world now, can right. we hear the backstory? Well, yeah, I think the backstory is always important and it, it, it enables us. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it you having me on and I, I'm happy to be here. Uh, but I think it's really important for us to, to share those, those parts of our lives and those parts of ourselves uh, to help people identify. And we're all interconnected, whether we like to believe that or not. Uh, we're all interconnected beings. We're all interconnected with earth and planet and nature. And I know that you have an affinity for that. So we'll talk about that. But my, uh, I don't want to go you know, too deep into it and bore people, but my story, I was uh, definitely living a, a very self-sabotaging life. I was uh, easily swayed by peers at a very early age. I didn't have a lot of really uh, strong male influence in my life. Uh, my dad and mom split up when I was about, well, he, he kind of started to check out when I was about 11 and he, and he fully moved out when I was uh, 13 or 14. And that kind of gave me uh, carte blanche. I was able to just do whatever I wanted. My mom was a sweetheart. Uh, she trusted me and loved me and kind of set me off into the world with a big smile and be a good boy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, I'll be a good boy, mom. <laughs> and, you know, as soon as I shut the door, like the horns came out <laughs> and I was not being a good boy. And so I, I often say that I was really my true essence was kind of uh, there was a uh, an invasion by the ego and i was easily swayed by the um 
the pleasures of the flesh. And I was really into uh, being a bad boy. You know, I was mischievous. Uh, we did bad things, uh, things that were against the law. I never got caught, never was arrested, luckily. Uh, but yeah, I, I pushed the edge and, and I, I got into drinking alcohol and then I started experimenting with drugs. Fortunately for me, uh, as opposed to, unfortunately for some of my friends, I had athletics. I, I, I turned out I was a, a fairly good athlete. I became a very good football player. I was all state in high school. It took me to college and it enabled me to kind of put that crazy lifestyle on, on hold or pause for a bit. I'd go on hiatus and then I would focus on my athletics and I was really into fitness. I really loved training. And I was the ego again. I wanted to be as good or better than everybody else. So I was driven by the vanity. It yeah. wasn't it wasn't really something that I was passionate about or or, or you know, I had pride in being good at something. It was I needed to be better than you or better yeah. than him. And I wanted the accolades. I wanted to pat on the back and I just wanted to be acknowledged. Yeah. And I think that was also true with, with women. I wanted to cut. It was all about the conquest and just being able to brag. Like she likes me. I'm going out with her. Oh, you see who I'm dating. And it was just so shallow and empty and self-serving and narcissistic and ugly. You know, when I, in retrospect, when I look back, it was just, uh, I was just very selfish. And so, and I just have to, I just have to interject yeah. real quick. I have so much compassion for this because as we look at uh, so many people's patterns in life, especially when there's like an abandonment wound, right? It's like you weren't seen by your dad at that critical time. Eleven, it's like right when puberty starting. It's right where you're developing an identity yeah. and being seen, and he's gone, you know. And so, yeah. it's like I look at those patterns, and I just have so much compassion for it because it's really coming out of a wounded place. You're like, see me, see Huge. me, see me, please see me, exactly. everybody see me. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. You know, so it's like, oh, I but I, and I commend I you for being so open for about it. Yeah, I was des I was desperate for it. And it, and it goes deeper. You, you really hit the nail on the head. And it, it, I'm, I'm not here to to bash my dad because my my dad just didn't have the skills. It's just and, how it went. And, right. And it was and I often say this and I know that it, it, there's a lot of people that that don't believe in reincarnation. And there are a lot that do. Mm -hmm. But I think about it if there is reincarnation. I'm not saying to believe it or not. Let's just pretend that it might exist. Some suggest that we're born into the same family and the same line heritage uh, over and over. So who's to say that I'm not responsible? Who's to say I'm not my great, great, great grandfather? <laughs> that I love my it. Great, great grandfather that effed up my grandfather that effed up my father this thing could be my fault <laughs> you I love know? that I love it you gotta, you gotta really open your mind to things yeah. and I, I love my dad and, and I get it I understand yeah. you know what it's like to be in in abusive even if it's self-abusive relationships yeah. it's damaging yeah and so yeah. I, I was I was hurting I, I was I was living in my pain body I wanted that attention I wanted that approval and I just wasn't getting it and the the pursuits that I was chasing the the athletics the accomplishments in athletics and the and my attempts of you know making myself feel better about myself with women all empty none yeah. of it filled me another none of it filled the void and it wasn't until I started realizing that that I was like that aha moment like ah okay that's not working let's shift and and bring my focus and attention over here and fortunately I was introduced to a mentor that made some suggestions and when I heard those suggestions I was all in and mm -hmm. I'll get back to those in a little bit but uh, let me just finish my my story of what happened so I went off to college and I, I was able to put those those crazy ways aside for long enough to get my skill set high enough to where I succeeded very at a high, very high level in college, good enough that I got drafted to play in the NFL by the Buffalo Bills. I was a punter and a kicker. I was also a wide receiver, so I was athletic, and I got drafted to play for the Bills. Now, when I got there, it was a totally different story. At Arizona, University of Arizona, where I played collegiate ball, I was playing wide receiver. At least I was 
trying to, and I, I was training because that's what I wanted. I didn't want to punt and kick. I wanted to play wide receiver. It didn't work out. So my training was so intense. i kind of backfired my, I, I, I kind of, it didn't work out because all that training that I was putting into my wide for wide receiver, it made my kicking and punting that much better. So during that se- my senior season, I had a really strong year. I got drafted. I played in two college all-star games. I performed really well. And so I got drafted number one kicker punter out of college that year. Nice. And the, the, the bills invested in me. And so I ended up making the team. And when I got there, I got to admit, I was scared, I was intimidated, and I was unprepared because my ego got in the way again. I'm just a punter and kicker. I'm not playing wide receiver here. I don't need to train. I don't need to to be at that top level of performance. I started drinking. I started partying. I started chasing again, and it just backfired on me. And the worst that I got uh, performance-wise, the worst I got, on, you know, drowning my sorrows and my embarrassment and my pain of not performing well in those types of behaviors. So it didn't last long. I only played four regular preseason games. I got cut. And then it really, I really got out of control. The embarrassment set in, the depression set in. I just really uh, went in a deep downward spiral into, into a dark, dark place. And at the same time, I ended up in L.A. I'm from New Jersey. I ended up in L.A. with a classmate of mine, a teammate of mine from Arizona. And I just kind of fell into uh, the Hollywood scene. And I started doing television commercials and modeling while trying to get back into the NFL. Mm -hmm. And so now I had this other lifestyle happening Mm -hmm. and I started to have some success in it. And it kind of pulled me in the other, in another direction. And I was kind of conflicted. Where do I go? And so now I'm kind of half in half out and I gave it one more shot to get into the NFL. I really focused and trained and got really, really strong. And it kind of backfired. I went to Pittsburgh Steelers. I felt like I was better than the other guy and Mm -hmm. they did. Did we get disconnected? Um, your camera is off, but I can hear you. Okay. Okay. I just had a, a, a call come in. I'm sorry about that. So, um, I, I didn't, I didn't make the team. I got cut. I felt like I, I was uh, mistreated. I, I thought I was better than the guy. And so I just took that as a sign. And then I went full into Hollywood and that's when things just got completely out of hand. And the ego just was like out of control. I was so delusional. Like I, I, I thought I could be like the next Brad Pitt just put on my looks. I had, I had, I was going to acting class, but I wasn't, that's all I was doing. I wasn't, I wasn't really training and taking the craft serious. It was just, I was so delusional. And uh, I want to pause. I, I want, I want to, I want to pause and interject right here because I, I, I just have to highlight some fascinating things I'm hearing. First, I'm hearing something that's so common and I know you see it because you do personal development in, in these, in these programs that you're doing that we'll talk about later, but I see so often that we mask our pain through these other quote unquote healthy interests. Like I'm a freaking NFL player like this. I am healthy. I am good. I, everything is good. And then yeah. what happens? You get <laughs> triggered by the exact, you weren't seen, you weren't, you, you weren't validated and it just triggered the crap out of you because none of that stuff had been addressed yet. And I can't wait to hear about this teacher you're going to tell us about in a minute, but yep. I think that's so common. Thank you for sharing that. Cause I think all of us can relate to, or at least most of us, I can for sure of just masking, just hiding all this un- deep, unaddressed pain under achieving. Yeah. And, and then on top of it, you know, once you get into that new space, I, I also wanted to highlight that you saying I was delusional. I thought I could be the next Brad Pitt. Well, I would say that part of your personality though, is also what's propelled you in your life. Because if you never believed that you could go to the NFL, you probably wouldn't have, you know, if you never, (laughs) so it's like, I hear what you're saying. Like there's gotta be some work put behind it, but it's also, you know, that's, it's a, it's a positive 
outside of your personality as well, that you believe you have vision, you have dreams, you allow yourself to go there. Cause a lot of people won't. So, okay, let's continue but with your story. To, to, to a degree. Now <laughs> I'll explain. I, it was like, uh, it was almost as if, you know, we talk about, I heard you talk about one of your podcasts about divinity and divine intervention and, and all that. And I kind of feel like I was placed on this path in order to get to where I am. Yeah. And what I mean by that is like, I, I had, okay, so I wanted to be a wide receiver in the NFL, but I got to the NFL as a punter. It wasn't really what I planned on doing. So right. it kind of was like, it, was that an alternative plan? Who, whose plan was that? Mm -hmm. So I made the NFL, but not quite the way that I had thought it was. Right. And then I, I, I go out to LA, like, what are the chances? I'm from New Jersey. Why would I go to LA? My buddy calls me out of nowhere and we start talking. He goes, yeah, what, what happened? Oh, he got cut by the bills. And, and he said, well, yeah, I'm going to try to play in Europe. Why don't you come out here and train with me? And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, good idea. Because, and I went because I couldn't handle the, what happened every day, uh, everywhere I went, what happened at the bills? What happened? What happened? Oh, so I had to relive the, <laughs> the biggest, most painful, embarrassing experience of my life, getting cut, being yeah. an embarrassment and a failure and a letdown. Mm -hmm. So I took off for California as quick as I could. Right. And so then I stumble into this Hollywood thing. And now out of nowhere, like I had no aspirations to be a model or an actor or any of those things. And my brother was modeling and being a, a quasi celebrity on MTV at the same time. So I was kind of thinking like, oh, if he could do it, maybe I can do it because this football thing might not work out. Mm -hmm. And then I, we had a mutual friend. Uh, his name was Ray who was becoming like a super male model. He was working with the biggest photographers. He was doing polo ads, Calvin Klein. He's hanging out with these supermodels. And it was like more <laughs> ego, you know, more <laughs> ego. Like, oh, I could be that guy. Right. So now I'm thinking, all right, let me go to Hollywood. So then I go to Hollywood and I start having a little bit of success. And so all that went straight to my head. And like I said, I went on this uh really downward spiral partying, drugs, alcohol, womanizing. And I was in that really dark place. And it just came to a point where I couldn't take it anymore. I, I, I didn't like the person that I saw in the mirror. I was embarrassed because deep down inside, I have a, a really beautiful family that, you know, all had these really you know, high expectations of me. And, you know, I, I was letting people down. I was, I just felt like an embarrassment. And so when, you know, they say when, when the student is ready, the teacher appears and that's exactly what happened. I was desperately ready. And a girlfriend that I was seeing at the time knew I was in pain and suffering. And she's like, why don't you come meet this guy? I think he can help you. And she introduced me to this, who she called a, a Chinese healer. And he turned out to be Vietnamese. Uh, his name's Grandmaster Mok Dom. He passed uh, last July, but he uh, became a mentor of mine. And uh, he was a very, very powerful uh, healer. He did acupuncture and herbs, very uh, unique style. He was a sixth generation doctor. Uh, and he was also um, a high level martial artist, grandmaster, 21 degrees of black belt. And when I met him, he knew everything about me. I'm talking everything, like specific, private, secrets like he divulged all of it right in front of my girlfriend and embarrassed me like to no end and he just said john i know you're unhappy there's another way i can show you and i was like i want to know I'm, I'm all in because i was like i was really really bad like i was really contemplating like ending my life mm -hmm. and uh, that's how bad it got and he knew that and he he said to me, John, there's another way and I'll show you. And what he showed me was the way of the spiritual man. He didn't teach me martial arts. He taught me exercises that a martial artist would do in order to build their chi, their energy, and to, and to strengthen the mind. And so a lot of people, you don't hear too much about how to train the mind when it comes to exercise. And he said, don't train, you train for vanity. He called me out. He's like, why you lift weights? And I said, to be strong. He said, no, 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 that didn't, that's not reason. Why you train? Why you lift weights? 
And I was like, to be strong. He goes, no, nah, tell me the real reason. And he goes, you like, you like what you see in the mirror, right? And I was like, uh, yeah. He's like, you train for vanity. I was like, true. And he's like, yeah, I know. I know. I'm right. I'm your grandmaster. <laughs> so it, it was true. I was, I wanted the six pack. I wanted to attract women. I wanted people to look at me and go, Oh, look at that guy. He's got a six pack. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so he said, I'm going to show you another way to train. And he, and he taught me how to focus on the mind. And he said, don't worry. The training we're going to do is super intense for you physically. And you're going to be really, really strong physically. But the, the, the focus is going to be on the mind and the energy and your immune system and being super, super powerful. Nice. And then he said, to help, also help your mind, you're going to have to meditate. Meditation is just as important as eating and drinking. So I'm going to teach you to meditate. And another thing, you have no spiritual life. All you do is think about the physical. You think about eating. You think about woman. You think about orgasm. You think about relaxing. You think about your body. Everything physical. Yeah. Never think about the spiritual. Mm. And it was too. I was spiritually bankrupt. And that, what I believe, uh, also with being disconnected from nature, was the, that was the common, those were the common denominators that led to my disconnect my depression my sports induced anxiety all of the negative things mm -hmm. that were ailing me they all disappeared as soon as i started living this lifestyle and it was like instantaneous mm -hmm. it was within weeks i started feeling better that that feeling of of hopelessness completely was lifted i started feeling a sense of self i started finding self love it was a, that was a process that began growing and growing and growing and it gradually came and when when you're self loathing and down on yourself and you see no value in who you are that's heavy yeah. and when you're yeah. when you when you want to end when you're so bad that you want to check out and leave like this beautiful world and beautiful people that that love you and care about you that that means like you've made some really bad choices and you're not you're blinded by them you're not seeing yourself for who yeah. you really are and what yeah. you possess and what you have to offer yeah. we have so much to offer and we're so distracted by all that outside nonsense yeah. that we, we don't even see it every yeah. one of you every person on this earth no matter what your circumstances you have so much to offer those that you share life with your mom your dad your sister your brother your boyfriend your girlfriend your neighbor your coworker, whoever it might be you might have three people in your life it doesn't matter. You can treat those three people with an abundance of love and kindness. And that is enough. That makes you more than enough. And that's what I learned. I was, it, it was when I switched from self-service to service and thinking about others in a different way, all of a sudden that stuff just kind of just lifted up and floated away. And then God came into my life and nature came into my life and purpose came into my life and passion. And all of a sudden things opened up and I started saying, oh, it's not so important to be a football player. It's not so important to be a uh, look at me. I'm a model or I'm a commercial actor or I'm Brad Pitt or whatever. None of that mattered. I, it's not, it's just, it's a foolish way to go about life. Yeah. If you think of if you shift and you and you think about how can I help, how can I serve, it makes everything worth living. I want to hit on meditation. And I actually think this is so funny. I'm like laughing inside my head because in, this morning was the first morning in a minute that I, I had an early appointment earlier than I usually do. And I almost skipped my meditation. I literally started to walk out into my garage and I was like, no. Nope. My workout was going to have to take a cut. Meditation's not taking a cut. And I came and I sat down right in this chair. And as I meditated, I started to stretch because sometimes in the beginning of my meditation, I start stretch. And I heard this very clear, just stop, stop, be here. And I went into that, you know, that pure presence you get into. And I heard very clearly, you spend so much, you spend all your time in the physical, all of it, everything you do all day long is in the physical realm. This moment is the only time that you come into pure consciousness and to the, the true spiritual realm. So be still, be still, just 
be here as long as you can, you know? And it's, yes. um, my question for you, cause I love meditation too. And it's a part of my coaching practice. And I, I hope he's probably going to listen to this and I hope, <laughs> hope he doesn't mind me shouting him out, but I have a, a client right now who is building his empire. He is in it. He's awesome. Awesome. Dude has an amazing marriage family. He's awesome. But he's like, I can't get down with the meditation thing. Like, seriously, I'm not seeing the benefit. Like I tried it. I was just like, I don't know. Can, I, can you speak to the, the busy entrepreneur that's building their empire and they just don't really see the benefit of meditation. Can you speak on that? Uh, I could probably speak about meditation for an hour, uh, but I think the, the main bullet points that I would suggest is for me personally, everything is your practice, right? So whatever you do with your life is yours. You have to find the value right. in what it is. So your, your meditation could be literally walking in yeah. nature and focusing on your breath. There's moving meditation, right. there's sitting right. meditation. You, it's all about where your mind is and where your focus is on. If you're one of those people who you can't stop, you can't sit still, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you, you can't sleep, you know, then it's important for you to try to at least spend 10 minutes decompressing because you might not, you might not see it as stress, but it's stress. Yeah. And so you need to limit your stress. We need to manage our stress. It's very dangerous yeah. to, to have that cortisol keep building and building and yeah. that inflammation that comes with it. So stillness is very important. It might be in a bathtub or floating yeah. in your pool or in at the beach or yeah. at the park. You have to it, you don't have to. I suggest <laughs> that you find the time to just get quiet yeah alone yeah. in nature under a tree uh sitting in a meadow uh at the beach whatever it might be wherever you are just try to find time to sit and connect with your breath and the benefits they say uh the science now they're starting to do the research 10 minutes is enough yeah. you yep. do 10 minutes and when you start to uh, when when a guy like that might say oh i've tried meditation I just can't do it. I don't see the value in it. I often ask that person, a person like that, and I've heard it hundreds of times. I've tried it. I've tried it. I've tried it. It didn't work. And I say, well, how many times did you try it? And they're like, oh, like five times, 10 times, 20 times. And I, I always say, okay, have you ever played a sport? Golf, basketball, baseball. Okay. So if you learned how to play golf, you know, you're chipping. How, how often, how many times did you practice your chipping before you can get it to, uh, within three feet of the, of the pin on a regular basis? You probably still can't do it. You've been playing golf for 10 years or how long did it take the kid, the, the basketball player that makes eight out of 10 foul shots every time? How many years of practice did it take him to get eight out of 10 or the baseball player, or the violinist or anyone that's perfected a skill how long did it take you to get that? There's a great book by Malcolm Gladwell. talks about the, the uh, success. I think it's called Outliers. 10,000 yeah. hours, right? I'm not suggesting you meditate for 10,000 hours, but be realistic. It's going to take time. But you start seeing benefits from meditating within a couple of weeks of consistency. So if you practice every day for 10 minutes, I guarantee you give it through. I, I do. I like to, my big numbers, 49, seven weeks. If you do 49 days of 10 minutes a day of meditating, I guarantee you that guy will have a different experience. Well, actually I was very surprised by him because he told me he went through a strict every day. It was like a challenge in a group that he was in for six months. He said he meditated every day. And I was like, wow. really? So I asked him, I was like, well, what, what was your practice? And he said he used the calm app. And I was like, well, there's a whole bunch of different forms. So I love your, your ideas on that. It's like finding your group for me personally. I know a lot of people like to start with guided and that's great. I mean, whatever calls to you, I, for me, like that silence is what I'm going for because it trains me to do that throughout my day. Like just now I had to run some errands. 
silence. I just want to be in silence. I just want to, because I don't think, I think that's one of the major reasons, as you mentioned, the, the stress overload is because we never have any time to think about anything, to let release things, let them go. And we wait until we got off scrolling media, our social media at 11 o'clock and we're laying our heads on the pillow. And we wonder why we can't fall asleep because we, that's the first time we've been in silence all day, you know? So I appreciate your, um, your thoughts on, on two methods, like try different forms of meditation, try it, find your group. And then also a consistent practice. I was very surprised, as you said. I I started yeah. noticing quite immediately su- with a consistent practice the benefits, especially on I'm focus. Surprised. And it, I'm surprised yeah. by that too. Maybe I think silence is key. And the way I learned to meditate is uh, sitting in a lotus position, uh, focusing on breath, yeah, allowing thoughts to come and go. Yes. Whenever you start to see yourself, when you start to notice, oh, I am paying attention to that thought came in. Right. I'm starting to have that dialogue that goes on with right. it. Go right. back to breath, go back yep. to breath, always yep. returning to sensation of I'm breathing. And you're no, and you're not only the, the, the benefits that, that he might, that person or a person that struggles understanding what the benefits are, the benefits of just deep breathing alone. Yeah. So we don't even have to call it meditation. Go into your all into your quiet place, wherever it might be, in your car, in your office, in your bedroom, undisturbed, and do 10 minutes of focused deep breathing. The benefits of that alone yeah. are going to be well worth that 10 minutes of your time. Yeah. It's going to help to lower your blood pressure. It's going to help you reduce stress. Yeah. It's going to help all it, it brings ideas. It yeah. helps to slow the brain activity. Yeah. So right then and there, are three great reasons to just bring yourself to a, a quiet place and focus on, on the, that's God's greatest gift to us. It's, yeah. a, it's a never yeah. ending gift of, of a reminder that we are all a part of this incredible experience life. We're all interconnected because we're all doing the same thing every second of every day, which is breathing. Yeah. That's what makes us all the same. We're all breathing constantly. But when you're not paying attention to breath and it's a shallow breath, you're missing out on the benefits. It's when you take okay. deep breaths, when you start to get really deep, deep uh, ex- um, benefits from that. Yeah. And I love that now we have like breath experts who teach us that we have parasympathetic nerve receptors deep in our lower lungs. And we have all this scientific backing, but people have been saying forever, take a deep breath, mm-hmm. just take a deep breath. You'll be good. Like we've known that yes. Who knows how long and guys, if you're listening, just pay attention right now while you're listening to us, how deep are you breathing? This is something I do all the time, especially if I'm like on an interview or on a coaching call. And I notice I'm feeling kind of up, like kind of anxious. I'm just like, mm. and yeah. I'll just, while I'm talking, I'm just like, you know, while in those breaks, I just start breathing deep and it's like a complete state changer. So thank you for that. Huge. And, okay. Let's move on. So now you're like, you're in your karate kid <laughs> phase, <laughs> exactly. going through your healing. You've got this amazing spiritual teacher. And uh, so where, you know, you talked about service, right. And I agree that I, I had an ayahuasca experience that changed it. You know, sometimes those moments where they like, you get like, sorry for lack of a better word, like bitch slapped. It's just like, no, you are like, not, you're not even close to like on path. And a lot of my motivations were selfish. I realized I was like, and when I, when I got healed in my heart on that, and it wasn't about me anymore, I was out of the way and it was pure service. That's when everything in my life just started going up. I was more fulfilled, more happy, more driven, more passionate in a very peaceful, loving, like abundant way. And so I'm curious, you know, where did service take you? Um, well, when I, <laughs> when I first started uh, working uh, with Grandmaster, um, I don't like, I, I really don't like admitting this, but I was, I was selling my profession, my main profession or source of income after I, the, the whole thing blew up. Football blew up. I played three years. I went, I played in the world league. I tried out for the Steelers. I got cut. I tried going deep into going all in in Hollywood. That all blew up in my face. I had nothing. Um, I ended up getting a a woman pregnant that I barely even knew. She says, I'm having your baby with or without you. I'm like, oh my, I had nothing. I had no job. I had no money. I was a mess. Now I'm a dad. 
And uh, fortunately for me, she became the love of my life. She's my soulmate. We have four children together, happily married for 20 plus years now. It's incredible. Um, but it was at the time, it was like, what is happening? And so I go into my roommate's room and I was like, bro, uh, I'm having a baby. I need money. Can you lend me some money? He had a lot of money. He's like, I'm not giving you another dime. I've been floating you for months. And I was like, ah, he goes, but I'll introduce you to my boy who's a kingpin in Tucson. You got some connections in New York. You can sell some weed. I'm like, oh, uh, okay. So my dumb ass decides that I'm going to sell some weed. And I start, I get into the business and it did not go well. <laughs> I was, I was struggling. That turned into a complete nightmare. Uh, I ended up writing a book that, uh, mm -hmm. called punt that has a lot of these stories in there that were just beyond unbelievable i got robbed for seventy five thousand oh dollars i had king things wanting to break my knee legs i was in trouble it was like a mess i, oh, I was, man. It was bad. and so i ended up grandmaster said to me and i didn't tell him what i was doing this is just an example of how this guy knew things he said to me one day he's like sit down and he goes you need to stop doing what you're doing to make money and I was like, what? What do, you, what do you mean? And he goes, I know what you're doing to make money. It's not good. Bad karma. And wow. I was like, he's like, if you can't think of something else to do, I'm going to tell you what to do. And so I went wow. and meditated and I thought about it. What can I do? I, I, and I knew that already. I knew I needed to get out of it. Yeah. And I was planning on getting out of it. And I went back to him the next day. And I said, Grandmaster, how about if I teach the people what you're teaching me? And he said, perfect. And I went home and uh, within six months, uh, I raised a little bit of money and I opened up a gym mm -hmm. and I started teaching uh, what I uh, now call the 49 day warrior challenge. And uh, that is uh, a 49 day challenge where I implement these seven disciplines, four of which he taught me and three that I brought in my own. The reason for seven was because of the seven deadly sins. Mm -hmm. I was committing all of those seven deadly sins. So I felt like I needed seven positive uh, disciplines that were going to counterbalance and fight and displace those seven mm -hmm. sins that I was committing all the time. And service was one of them. So I felt like uh, opening a gym put me in a position to where I can work with the community. I could give back. I could work with the youth. And that's what I started doing. I started working with the youth and especially kids that were struggling. I worked with, uh, I've worked with a lot of kids that uh, struggle with depression and, and uh, you know, suicidal thoughts and things of that nature. And uh, I've always really resonated with kids. I do, I've worked with adults as well my, my entire career but I love working with kids. So I kind of, uh, I went through uh, the athletic route. So I was training athletes and then I would always just drop my, my, my experiences on them and what I learned mm -hmm. and, and the training regimen and mm -hmm. the mindfulness and connecting with nature and service and prayer and spiritual life. So I was always, you know, within the, the sports conditioning, you know, dynamic, I would always drop my, you know, my little uh, seven disciplines philosophy on everybody. And that was just the way I, I felt like going out and serving the, the, the population in my community. That's awesome. And you did that for like 20 years, correct? That gym? 20 plus years. Yeah. And now I closed the brick and mortar. COVID was just, you know, a time for me to move on. And now I'm, uh, I'm in the process of of, I'm going to be moving to, to North Carolina in a couple of years, and I want to have a facility that's designed just for this. And my daughter and my wife's into yoga. She's an RN, and my daughter is getting into yoga and body work, and, and nice. uh, she's going to be a Reiki nice. uh, therapist, and she's an equine therapist. So we're going to open up Ooh. a little facility down in North Carolina and teach all these wonderful practices and get people reconnected with nature and the, the spiritual side of life. I think that's the, the biggest thing yep. that is in, in need right now. Yep. Uh, there's so much fear. There's so much conflict, uh, whether that's with our, within ourselves or with each other. And we just really need to, to, to reconnect with a higher power 
And we do that through nature. We do that through prayer. We do that through community efforts and uh, reconnecting with each other. Stop arguing. Stop fighting. It really gets us nowhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we, we, we all have different ideas and different beliefs and different ideologies. But when it all comes down to it, we all just want the same thing. Mm -hmm. Peace, happiness, love, mm -hmm. harmony, those types of things. So try to get out of that mindset of being needing to be right needing to be heard and right. you know those types of things right and just focus on empowering yourself being healthy being strong and get that immune system strong that's vital right now don't rely do what you're going to do with the medical world that's your business but take matters into your own hands you got to do that on top of whatever it is you're doing. Right. So right. if you're going to take supplements or listen to your doctor or get that, whatever, whatever right. it is, also rely on your own intuition. Yes. Take matters into your own hands, exercise, connect with nature, eat a healthy diet, take those supplements that the doctors are recommending and the nutritionists and the health practitioners. It's important. It's, 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 it's like you're, it, what you just said, it is the ultimate slap in the face. If it's anything, what COVID is saying, get your together, <laughs> blank, yeah. fill in the blank, get yeah. it together, people. This is your wake up call and your slap in the face yeah. and don't rely on anybody else. You know, put the power, take power, take control. You take responsibility for yourself. You know how to treat yourself. You know what you need to do. God made you capable yeah. of dealing with anything that comes your way. Yep. And those answers are inside of us. And I, that's why I love hearing what you're doing with this facility out North Carolina. One, cause I'm from Virginia. So that's close to home. Grew up going to North Carolina nice. a lot, but two, like my, my vision is to make my home, my retreat center here in the mountains in Utah for the sole purpose of connecting people to nature on top of, yes, we do the biohacking and the health and the mindset coaching and stuff. But Nate, like I got a huge download. It was like, let let us do it. Let nature do it. Let, let, yes. div let divinity help just facilitate an experience. And, you know, besides retreats, just any, at any time you have nature, you got something, you got a little bit right. of grass in your yard, or you got some park you can go to and don't free. If you're doing that right now, and you're listening to us on a, my podcast, turn it off right now. Just <laughs> idiot. Just kidding. No, well, real quick. Cause he's got actually a really cool offer. You might be interested in, but, but turn it off. Like don't listen to stuff every Every single moment of every day, like be in nature in silence and don't try, don't think, don't like be like, okay, I'm going to figure out yeah. my problem. Just let it go. Let go, let go, let go. keep letting go, keep letting go. It, yes. Observe the beauty uh, that's all yes. around you. Notice it. You'll be so amazed at what comes in. And for me, I think, you know, if, if we do a combination of, I like to think of it as putting nature inside me and putting myself inside nature, right? So the things that I'm eating, the water, the minerals, the, the thoughts, are they high vibrational thoughts aligned with nature that operates in a really high order? I, chaotic, but amazing high order. And then putting myself in that environment and it brings so much peace, like you're saying. And I, I think that we are so sad because we are so disconnected. We are so yeah. wrapped up in the mundane day-to-day -day BS and what Carol yeah. said at work and like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, um, I know. And the social media thing with the, the back and forth and the bickering, like I, 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 I'm just, whoa, bro. put it like, down, relax. Yes. Put it down. Yeah, put it down. Put it down. When you do go outside in nature, leave your phone, yeah. disconnect yeah. from that, disconnect from everything. Yeah. Take your shoes off. Yes. Take your, yeah. get your bare feet onto the earth. There's movies about, there's documentaries about this yeah. grounding, earthing, wow. literally with the first thing grandmaster said to me, we are disconnected from the earth. Take mm -hmm. your shoes and socks off, put your feet on the earth. Take your hands out of your pockets, stretch out to the sky, let the sun on your on your face and just be there Love and it. breathe. And so when you do that, when you go outside, if it's your backyard or walk at the park or the beach, literally try to take your shoes off mm -hmm. and get, let that uh, Earth's energy get absorbed up into your body. It's very, very important. Yeah. One thing oh, that I like. 
Oh, go ahead. So, I was just gonna uh, say the other thing I, I was going to say, what, what, in addition to what you were just yeah. saying, yeah. is gratitude. That mm -hmm. attitude of gratitude is so yeah. important. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's so much to be grateful for. Every day the sun comes up. Every day you're you're blessed with breath. You're still alive. You know, you might be struggling. You might have uh, 50 pounds to lose. You might have just lost your job. You might be struggling financially. There's still things to be grateful for. You yeah. might have an awesome person right next to you by your side that you can lean on, that you can give a hug to or get a hug from. Uh, all, you know, all these things mm -hmm. are things sometimes that we take for granted. Yeah. There's food in your refrigerator. Yeah. There's abundance everywhere. There's opportunities. So much to be grateful for. Yeah. And it's a, it's a practice. I, I feel it's, it, you have to train your mind to do it. I have a, uh, one of my mentors, his program is called Grata Shift. So it's all his whole, he built his whole mindset business off of Tony. gratitude. Tony. Tony. Yeah. I you know, Tony. Right? Uh, yeah. I Tony listen Child. To you. I listen your okay. Yeah. Me. Tony's the best. And in and, and, and this awesome. practice, I, you know, one of my biggest, like first moments when I first started doing this program was feeling sorry for myself, folding laundry as a mom of four kids, a single mom entrepreneur. And I, you know, they went back to their dads before they could help with laundry. And I am literally folding like a living room full of laundry. I felt like, and I was like, none of my friends know how hard this is. They don't have kids like, you know, going into all this. And yeah. I just immediately swapped into, I'm so grateful. I have kids. I'm so grateful. I have freaking high quality eco-friendly soap to wash these in, in a dryer that does it for me <laughs> in a climate controlled room. I'm doing this in right now with music and I have hands, you know, I know somebody who doesn't have any hands. I'm like, imagine if you didn't have hands, girl, I'm so grateful. I have fingers, you know, and it yeah. immediately changed my state. And so I practice that often, you know, you're in a busy airport and it's crazy and it's, you can quickly go into, oh, this freaking sucks. Ugh. Or you can yeah. be like, I get to go to Texas. Yay. You know, switch that yeah. into gratitude and it changes your state so quickly. So I love that. And, um, on the grounding thing, I just had to add a little idea for you guys. I have, I don't, I like to do little different. I have four kids also. And I like to do little different traditions, like that are special to just me and that one kid, you know? And so my 11 year old Kyle, we go on barefoot walks and he loves it. And he asks to go. So it's just around our block right here. It's just short and easy, but we just take it. our shoes off and he thinks it's so awesome. You know, that is um, awesome. <laughs> and another thing is go lay in your grass, like in the middle of a day, if you're lucky enough to work from home or you're just home one day, I promise you, if you lay just in your grass or somewhere outside and put your hands like this behind your head, cross your feet, just like you could not have a care in the world for 60 seconds, your whole state will change. Just looking at the oh, yeah. sky, looking at the clouds. It's incredible. So I, anyway, it I've is. experienced what you're saying and I love that counsel so yep. much. Okay. And what you were saying earlier about all that, it's just the shift in perspective, really, you know, catch um, yourself. Uh, yeah. One of my disciplines, yeah. one of my, one of the seven disciplines is know thyself and that's self-reflection and self-analysis. So yeah. that, a big, yeah. big, big part of that is how am I thinking? How yeah. am I processing the thoughts? How totally. am I reacting? We can be prisoners of our own mind. So yeah. it's really a matter of, of analyzing who you are and how you're putting yourself out into the world and how are you reacting totally. to the stimuli that keeps coming in? How am I reacting in my relationships? How am I reacting to those chores or the yeah. adversity or the struggles yeah. and the hardships? Yeah. You know, we, you can, all those things can just break you down and bring you to a point where you're full of anxiety. You're full of stress. You're to the, you're depressed. You're all of that can culminate in a really, really bad, heavy, dark place. So mm -hmm. shift the perspective, do the things that are going to counter that with exercise and good eating and all these good habits that we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. And your life will change yeah. if you're in that, if you're in that place and everyone's, you know, we, we have levels, you know, so some people feel like complete hopeless, dark, dark despair, you know, baby steps. You just got to just believe that there's a light at the end of the tunnel, mm -hmm. just face the light. Mm -hmm. Turn your back on the darkness, face the glimmer of light and just draw mm -hmm. on that, mm -hmm. allow that light to pull you forward. And that's mm -hmm. what it does. That's what God offers us at all mm -hmm. times. There's always angels. There's always light. Call on it. Ask for help. It's there for you. You're never alone. You're never, ever alone. And again, that breath is the reminder. That's the gift that keeps on giving. You're never alone. And just keep on pushing and pushing and pushing yourself until it comes effortless. And it will. 
You just have to sometimes get through some really tough times and ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help because there's someone out there, even a stranger. If you don't have someone close to you in your immediate circle, there are places and people you can go to that are more than willing and happy. Mm-hmm. I would help. You mm-hmm. would help. Yeah. You know, th- th- there's there's people out there yeah. that yeah. that are just full of that ability yeah. to yeah. give that, lend, lend that helping hand. And want to, and are looking yeah. for opportunities to. So I think, yeah, I know when Absolutely. I was in my dark night of the soul, I, I had this story that I've observed in other people and they don't want, I didn't want to be a burden on anybody, right? Like my ego was too strong and it was, I had to, I had to reach out. I had to start at least, let me just reach out and hang out with people like just that. Cause sometimes you want to isolate when you're in your shit, you know, like you just want to like, yeah. hide. and yeah. it's so healthy to, to just like, to just one branch, just reach out. Cause there's, you're exactly right. There's so many people out there that are like, it thrills me, you know, it thrills me to help. I'm like, Oh my gosh. And I have access to so many resources. Like it's, you're not even asking that much like here. Yeah. Talk to this guy or this, you know, go to this, this way, or yeah, take this supplement or yeah, that, that'll help, you know? So yep. I love so much, so much wisdom there. What you're saying. Um, okay. So you're, I want to talk about these, these, these 49 days. This is your warrior challenge, correct? Yeah. And yeah. I know that you have a, a, like an offer on this for the audience. So I was wondering if you could share about what you have. Yeah. So the, the 49 day warrior challenge, I also learned, uh, through grandmaster again, he was a martial artist. So he, he taught me these, uh, hand strengthening exercises. And the reason being, he explained to me that hands are very, very important because they can be used in two ways. They can be used as a weapon. Mm. And sometimes that can be done in a negative light where you're trying to hurt someone. But it also is very important because you can defend yourself. In in case of a situation where you have to defend yourself, you need strong hands. So he taught me how to defend myself with my hands. And he said they can also be used as healing. So acupressure and massage. And so uh, I incorporate, I I added a, a, a grip hand finger strengthening exercise program and the 49 day program, it's called new strength unleashed. Mm. And the 49 day program is a, uh, you're, you're basically implementing these seven disciplines into your life. And the one discipline is elevate your chi, which is the exercise component. And I learned these three exercises that are all about the energy of the body and exercise in the mind to become really powerful and strong. And the more you train your mind, the easier it is to navigate through the the hardships in life. Mm -hmm. And it translates, you can translate from uh, your workouts into dealing with all the adversity that life throws at us in a a more manageable way. So for 49 days, you're doing the same three exercises and you're trying to do better on two of those exercises each day. So one of them, it's a power punch where you're you're in a deep squat and your legs are burning. And so when you put yourself into a, an uncomfortable, painful situation, mm-hmm. your brain automatically goes, I don't wanna do this, this yeah. hurts. I don't wanna be uncomfortable. And so you wanna stop. Yeah. And so for some people it's happened instantly, like within 30 seconds, you want to stop. And so you're only doing 50 to 100 punches. For other people, especially women who I believe, um, and this isn't like, uh, you guys, women are just designed, in my opinion, to deal with childbirth, which is what I witnessed through my wife delivering three of our four children with no uh, pain meds the most excruciating thing ever like what is happening right now and so for her to be able to deal with that pain her threshold for pain is way Mm -hmm. higher than mine Mm -hmm. so uh, I've seen I've seen women sit in these horse stances for 20 30 minutes where yeah where where I can only do it for like five you know (laughs) and I've been doing you know, maybe a little bit longer, but I've been doing this. I got to charge my phone. So I'm going to take it off and hold the phone for the, the rest of it. Um, 
I've been doing these exercises for years and years and years. And I can, you know, I've never really timed myself or I'm always, a, a, I'm counting reps, but the, 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 the methodology is to do as many as you can and beat that record every day. Awesome. So to do that is extraordinarily challenging mentally. Yeah. Seven weeks of trying to outdo yourself every day. It's like, whoa. Yeah. So, and then yeah. the second exercise is called a pendulum lunge walk and you're holding dumbbells anywhere from three to 15 pounds, some people 20 pounds. And you're, you're, you're in a front stance in martial arts and you're raising both arms together in front of you. It's hard to imagine, but I give videos on how to do it, but your shoulders get challenged and you're able to do a lot more than you're going to want to do. So you're in this state of discomfort for a pretty long time. So having to deal with that burn for an extended period of time becomes a mental challenge. Yeah. And also the position that you're putting your body in grandmaster being an expert with energy and chi and chi flow, the life force energy that flows yeah. in and around us. He was an acupuncturist. I saw him heal people with needles from every disease known to man. I trained with him for eight years. I would visit his house and stay with him and help him with his patients. Mm -hmm. cancer patients, stroke patients, diabetes, kidney failure, you name it. I saw him treat them. Mm -hmm. He treated me for different things, inoperable brain tumor on my friend's mom. She's still alive wow. 20 years later. Um, incredible, incredible stuff. So wow. I believe that this guy knew, had secrets and information that was very, very valuable. So mm -hmm. this one exercise, he said to me, you do this exercise every day for 49 days in a row, you'll be the strongest you've ever been in your life. I instantly equated that to physical strength. What it turned out to be was energy and mental strength. Mm. And every time I've done it, I've done it maybe seven, eight times now. And every person that I've ever had done it, they all have the same experience. I've never had energy like this, the clarity, the mental acuity, the, the, the creativity, the mm -hmm. connection that I feel, mind-body connection, mm -hmm. it's stronger than I've ever had from one exercise. But to do it for 49 days in a row is a very difficult challenge, and it's not for everybody, but you even mentioned in our talk before we got on, your audience is, are those types of extreme challenge-oriented people. It, for that type of person, this is right up their alley. Uh, it's it's really an awesome challenge to push yourself in that way. And it only takes about 15, 20, 25 minutes a day uh, if you just do the lunge walks. Uh, so you can incorporate that into everything else that you're already doing. And anyone can find 20, 30 minutes to totally. add something if you want to. Yeah. Um, so that's the exercise component. And then you meditate. I ask you to meditate for a minimum of 10 minutes every day, nice. connecting with nature, spending 10, 15 minutes outside in nature, barefoot if you can. Uh, then self analysis, I mentioned, know thyself, uh, uh, nourish your body, the intake, the food, the water, the, the clear, clean thoughts, positive thoughts, gratitude, attitude, that type of thing. Uh, service, give a little bit of your time and, 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 and help someone in need or, or do something for the earth, uh, that type of thing. Mm. And then um, praying for others. We, if, you're, if you're someone that prays, uh, if you find yourself always praying, me, 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 please God help me, please God, yeah. try to shift that in a little bit of a way by praying mm. for others, praying Love for it. those in desperate need, the, the people that are in hospitals, the people that are mm -hmm. in refugee camps, the animals that are held captive against their will. Oh, there's so many things, you know, use your imagination. There's a million things to pray for. And those are the seven disciplines. And you try to incorporate as much of that into your life as you can for seven days. And the, the testimonials are just profound, life altering, life changing. Uh, it's, they forge awesome connections, mind, body, spirit, nature, all these different things that we've talked about today. Uh, it's just a great way to, 
to incorporate a, a really powerful lifestyle into your life. Uh, if you're already feeling amazing and peaceful and loving and harmonious, it'll just accentuate that. But especially for those that are in the struggle, that are feeling lost, that are needing a little boost, more energy, better sleep. Uh, if you're fighting anxiety and depression, this type of lifestyle completely empowers you uh, to make the changes that are necessary uh, to get out of that funk that you're in. I love it. There's the, I love the, the, I think, um, true sophistication is in simplicity. So it's very clear. It's very clear what to do, but as a mindset coach too, and a health coach, I know the, the powerful shifts that are going to come out of each and every one of those things. And you're doing it in a way that's fun and engaging because you're pushing yourself. You've got this commitment and I got to up level the next day, but all of those things bring us into this space that I, I know you, and I feel very grateful. I feel so grateful that I like luckily stumbled across in my life, this path of just beauty and fulfillment and goodness and kindness and health and energy and, and vibrancy. And that I'm listening to you do that. And I'm like, mm -hmm, to explain, I'm like, <laughs> well done. Well done. That it's awesome. Awesome. Thank um, you so much. Absolutely. And the grip strength program, I just have to say, like, there's so, I'm sure you know this, but you know, if you guys don't know listening, like there's so much research showing, showing that one of the key indicators is longevity. The key physical, physical indicator of longevity that they found in research is strength. So not muscle size, but actual strength and specifically grip strength. There's a bunch of research on grip strength being an indicator. Cause if you think about your nervous system, yeah. being able to get all the way down into your fingertips and have grip strength, you've got a fiery nervous system, you know? So it's, that's an awesome thing for longevity as well. Um, yep. yeah. So, um, can you, do you want to tell them where they can find this? Yeah. So we're going to, uh, we're going to have a, a, a link specifically for your audience. It's going to be new strength unleashed.com slash coach Tara, new strength unleashed.com slash coach Tara. And we're going to give your, uh, your listeners a uh, 20% off. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank John, you thank so you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on vulnerably sharing your story. You know, all this craziness, the dark night of the soul. I love when people <laughs> yeah. will share their dark night of the soul because so many people don't want to, but it's like when you've healed, it's like, Oh man, there's so many people going through dark stuff like that. Let me share that. There is that light at the end of that tunnel. Like we found it and I yeah. love you. Just, just look at it. Just, just, just see it believe and know that it's there. And so thank you for yeah, sharing yeah. like the low lows and what's possible coming out of that from in a place of healing. So thank you so thank much. You. And, I, and I know that I mentioned it earlier and I'm not a big plug self plugging guy, but the reason I do this is because I have a very dear friend. His name's DP Botachevsky who wrote my book punt mm. and it's called punt. It's on Amazon. It's the true story of John Neese. And it talks, it goes into real depth about my, my path and the dark, you know, the darkness that I went through and then meeting mm -hmm. grandmaster and all that craziness that happened with my, my dealing days and, and all the struggles I went through as an athlete and that, you know, all that need of, of look at me and, lack of self-worth and wanting approval, begging for it, and then finding my way. And then it gets into the grandmaster and finding my way and how it led to, you know, the 49 days and, and uh, finding uh, value in purpose and passion and, and just living life to the fullest. It's so awesome. Good job getting that written. <laughs> I just finished a book and it's a, it's, it's a lot of work. So guys, we'll link oh, yeah. that in the show notes. Again, it's punt the two story of John knees and the seven disciplines yes. of strength. So we will link that up in the show notes and I guess we'll wrap it up here. John, thank you so much for taking the time. It was awesome hearing your story and all the wisdom that you shared today. Oh, thank you so much, Tara. It really was a pleasure meeting you and you're doing great things. So keep up the good work. God knows we need it. <laughs> thank you. Yes. <laughs>